Hi, I'm Nick Lang. Hi, I'm Andrew Fox. And, and you're, you're watching Real Talk, Talk New York. Beautiful. Let's go. So my first experience with hockey was I was three years old. My mom was working in the office. Uh, some guy she was working with was actually the coach in Port Washington for the Long Island Edge and uh, got involved with their program at the young age. Just never gave it up since, fell in love, I'll never regret it. You know, I didn't even know roller hockey was a thing until about 13 years old. I found Skate Safe where we are right now and glad I did. My first experience with hockey was probably around the age of three. Um, my father was a big Ranger fan growing up in the 1960s, 1970s. Uh, and really fell in love with the game and wanted to make sure me and my brother Adam <clears throat> were heavily involved as well. Uh, we used to play in, in rec leagues uh, when we were young, uh, in leagues at Arctic Circle at Iceworks, as well as playing in the house leagues at Port Washington uh, on Long Island. I already finished. Wait, it. can I can <laughs> I drink on camera? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Oh, okay. we can do that. Yeah. yeah see, like. Can you get you guys another beer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, you gotta go that way. So at first exposure, I was playing ice hockey, you know, and you know we always thought that was hockey, you know. And as we got older, I started, you know, talking to a couple of people. A couple of people in my school, they started a school league roller hockey, you know. And when I joined, I didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into, but it was a ton of fun. The game was more skilled. And then ever since then, you know, my first roller hockey organization, I played for uh, East Coast Impact, and we played in a tournament over at. Uh, Mauritius and we played black ice and we happened to just sneak one by in overtime and uh, happened to get in a little scuffle with Josh Wager, a little shout out name drop right there to Josh Wager and we weren't exactly the best of friends but after that he ended up sending me a direct message on, uh, on Facebook, sliding my DMs. Ever since then I joined black ice and you know had a great experience with playing with all those guys. I've had a, a lot of opportunities both to play uh, roller hockey and ice hockey concurrently at the same time. Uh, uh, for me, they both were sports that I was aware of from a, a young age. And uh, I think one of the things that was really helpful for me that evolved my ice game to play at the highest levels over time was really roller hockey. Uh, being able to work on my skills and it's such a speed game and there's a lot of space on the rink where you have opportunities to move and weave and move through guys. and. I really work on the skills that allow you to succeed at the higher levels where there's not a lot of areas to move uh, and you make a lot of great friendships along the way as well. Uh, my buddy Nikki Lang over here, uh, when we played in the second grade like I've mentioned before, uh, we also had opportunities to, to reconnect later down the line after losing touch a little bit and have remained in close contact ever since and uh, go to Ranger games and uh, yeah. do a lot of other fun things so it's, it's been great. Big Garden guys of course obviously knows Everyone knows his brother plays defense with on the New York Rangers. It's honestly unreal to be able to watch him, and I'm sure you're proud of your brother. We got to play with him. He was probably 12 years old when we were 17 here, and he was just wheeling around all of us. We had no chance, and the kid's amazing. He's a stud, and he's going to be a Rangers defenseman, hopefully the captain in the near future. You're like two little girls together. <laughs> it's like, it translates over. We met in second grade on the team. Dude had the worst bit breath growing up, but that's besides the breath. That's besides. That's besides the point. But anyways, we were, he was on the the edge team, and then I, what did what did you do after that? Have you played? Did you stay there a little bit? I was in Yonkers, I left, and then I left after to go to the Bobcats, and it was the Gulls, and moved my way up for whatever whatever that was worth. Now and then we've lost touch, and then. He got into roller hockey, and I used to come here all the time mm -hmm. uh, before. And then I think one time he was on my team or something. It was like Nick Lang. Yeah, we like, were we played like, we played a house league, and he ended up being on my team. And like, I didn't even realize. And then you walk in, I saw him. I was like, this is unreal. And then forever we just kept playing yeah. here, played travel you know, tournaments teams, together too. Yeah. So. So honestly, playing a lot of hockey, I gotta say, like one of the most competitive things was definitely state wars. I mean. The atmosphere at State Wars is really nothing that compares to it. And I mean, being a 94, I was lucky enough to play with Chavo. And you know, when it comes to Chavo, everyone's a little hostile. We were playing Illinois in the, the uh, semifinals. And I remember we were in Illinois and there was ban a whole banner where everyone was and they're just screaming at us. They did not want us to win. Everyone's against Chavo and you know, there's nowhere to hide. We ended up losing the game in overtime, but you know, great memories and it was unreal of course to play with John. So 
that was some of the most competitive hockey I've, I've seen. I, I think for me, uh, the highest level of competitive hockey that I played was AAA here on Long Island. Uh, we played for the Gulls, and probably the most vivid uh, moment that I have through that time was uh, when I was in sixth grade uh, in the Nike Bauer Invitational. We were playing the Texas Attack in the first game of the tournament, and uh, we were down 2 nothing and 4-2, and uh, we came back to rally to win 5-4. I had two goals, three assists in the game, and. Uh, I led the tournament in scoring for one day, uh, beating the likes of guys that are in the NHL today like Adam Ernie and uh, Nick Schmaltz, both uh, first and second rounders respectively. So uh, that's a, a humbling moment for someone like myself. Yeah, I think for me, pregame rituals, uh, they, they stem back from uh, the early days of playing. I think one of the biggest pregame rituals is uh, usually the, the day of a game. Uh, whether it's morning or night, I will not eat any dairy. I had an uh, interesting experience where I had a, a cream cheese bagel and my stomach was bothering me and I, I had to sit out a game. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty embarrassing moment to say the least, but uh, that's one of them. I think just dialing in and, and focusing for me, uh, I, I listen to a little bit of music just to tune out outside noise, but um, at the end of the day, uh, I try to stay focused on the task at hand and uh, just execute what has to be done. I mean couple of pregame routines I mean a lot of the roller guys I'm sure a lot of ice guys you know you know the pregame stretch that's basically a given but outside of that you know I used to be superstitious it used to be the left shin pad goes on then the right and then the right skate but the left skate after so I, I was all screwed up as a kid now it's kind of just like get out play hockey you know if I'm gonna suck I'm gonna suck if I'm gonna miss the net I'm gonna miss the net if I'm gonna score I'm gonna score so that's basically how I feel at this point in my life No, so I don't know if I ever told you, but you remember J.J. McCoy? Yeah, All right, so, so Big Ed McCoy. Uh, high school hockey, roller hockey, you know, it's not the most serious league. And, I mean, this is, this is one of the, I'd say it's the worst for him, but I got to tell the story because it's unbelievable. So, high school hockey, I think it was quarterfinals. We're down one goal, right, and we're trying to tie the game. Kid's not getting any ice time. He's just, he's complaining to the coach, gets out there, right? Tries to pull a move in between the legs, dangling, dangling. Turns the puck over, down two goals, three minutes left in the game. Kid, without missing a beat, turns around, skates off the rink, gets in the locker room, and goes home. We end up tying the game, winning in a shootout. Kid sends out a full-blown text to the whole team about how he's super sorry that he blew it for us, we were gonna come back. Little did he know, we ended up winning the game, and it was, just, it was an unreal story. It really was. High school hockey, little, little stuff, but you know that's the stuff that makes it great. Yeah, I don't think, Nick, I've ever told you about a couple stories I got for you. I think I'll start with the, uh, the bad one first. So, you remember the North Jersey Avalanche? So I was playing a game at uh, Iceland. I was probably in fifth or sixth grade. Uh, Playing really well, had a lot of jump in my step, cut a couple points in the game. About a minute 30 left in the game, coach calls timeout. And I was like, oh boy, this isn't gonna look good. Classic politics in youth hockey, one of the worst things I hate. That's it. Uh, That's how the edge coach, team broke coach, up. coach goes, one, two are on. Fox, you're on the bench. The other guy goes on. We end up losing the game 3 2, Nick. How do you think I was feeling? Brutal. It wasn't a good feeling. Even at my sixth grade self. I undressed as quick as I could. I stormed out of the locker room fuming, had a conversation with the coach and said, uh, if, if you ever do that to me again, I will walk off this team the next game we played. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't win the game. We lost 6-1. Uh, I did, <laughs> did have a goal, which was made me feel pretty good. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the coach uh, never did that to me again, and he respected my thoughts there. But Yeah, but how did, how did Bruce Fox feel? Um, Bruce. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Fox Bruce is Fox. the real legend. Legend, legend. Uh, he definitely deserves a shout out and uh, he, he respected it and you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, uh, also, I don't think you ever knew this either that I uh, told Pat LaFontaine that all you care about is playing your son and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna quit as well. So uh, shout that, out. that's a true story too. I, I can't find the email, but uh, I wish I could. Big, big name drop. Peter Faso actually played for Pat LaFontaine on the 95 champion team, had to drop his name. He doesn't play anymore, but you know, youth, youth hockey legend, youth hockey legend. Uh, Nick, you wanna hear some, I got some good hockey stories as much as the, the bad ones that we've, we've shared already. Um, I think uh, watching Charlie McAvoy, I gotta give him a shout out, Long Island, Long Beach, New York, Boston Bruins. 
uh, watching him lose to Massapequa uh, my senior year of high school uh, in the semifinals. Was uh, that Giratano? Yeah, Giratano, oh, Giratano Giri. and the boys. Dana DiMartino with a, a stellar 40 plus save effort. Uh, I think the time of possession was about 48 out of 60 minutes and uh, Mass Peak was in, but either way, um, going out after that game, we were able to go up and, and beat uh, Belmore Merrick 5 0, and then uh, in the best of three series against Massapequa, uh, we outscored Massapequa 10 2 uh, in each of the games to uh, win uh, the Long Island Melanchino division uh, with a re record of 18 and 0. Uh, playing with my brother and a few other great guys, we uh, built a bond and uh, really persevered through it all. Another, uh, what about yourself, Nick? Another 495er name, too, Matt Bernat. Matt Bernat, yeah, Bernard. Matt Bernat. So, D3, shout out. I mean, honestly, probably wasn't the biggest win, but I'm not going to name drop or throw anyone under the bus, but one year, 495ers. First year, we ended up playing AAA. And we're going down to Marple. We got to play like Kraft, Master, Dangle Antonio. Who else was there? Maffei, Stock Squad. You know, they're winning. You know, we're going there for second. So a couple guys say they're not they're not going. And like I said, I'm not gonna name drop, but they're not going, because we're gonna lose. And we ended up pulling it off. We beat Crafty. Yeah, Crafty. You know, you you don't wanna hear it, but it happened. So we ended up beating Marple and uh, that was probably the, the biggest thing because it kind of stuck it to the guys who were like, Yeah, we're not going. It was in Pittsburgh, six hour trip. No one wants to make the trip, but play all year, you gotta at least finish it, and we did, and you know kind of gave us a little motivation and you know sometimes that's all the boys need all right so if i had to go with four guys let's get a little mix in here so obviously you got to have Kraft and pj up top that's just automatic i don't think anyone should have anyone a different and you got to have the the, the all-time greatest tip master in front i'd go with bobby Littris to take the net side and you know, probably get a garbage goal, a little rat in front. No one likes him, but you know, he gets the job done. And the fourth, man, who could be the fourth? You gotta throw a little livelihood in Giratano. Uh, I mean, well, come G on, you guys have been Giri boys Giratano's for years. in the box. Giratano's in the box. <laughs> so you gotta imagine Giratano's in the box. <laughs> So then, so wait, no, if he's in the box and you only Honestly, got three out of, there, you, of, got you, know, it. you know who doesn't get enough credit? Jay Corso. Jay Corso. Probably one of the most clutch guys out there. Smaller guy, but same thing. Good around the net, good in every situation. That's probably my four. Yeah, I think I think on my end, um, Nick, uh, if I had to pick four guys through a, a mix of roller and ice, who, who would I choose? Uh, that, that would be a, a very interesting choice. I think naturally I'd have to pick my brother. I think that'd be a foolish decision on my part. Be, uh, be at, at, at the very least. Uh, so that'd be my number one. I think my two would be uh, Brian Rubin from Equinox. Uh, they always said Rubin was a wall. and. Uh, he was a pretty damn good goalie, so uh, I'll put him in net. I think uh, if I had to pick a few other guys that uh, were, were good teammates of mine and also uh, good players and just good people as a whole, uh, definitely put Jeff Kotcher uh, on that list. Uh, he played some pretty high level uh, role hockey and uh, he definitely gave me the puck whenever I would ask, so I'd always appreciate that of him. Uh, and then as my, my fourth choice there, uh, if I had to pick somebody, um, I, I think I'd have to pick uh, someone that I've that, ooh, Nick, you got, any, you got any choices for me? This is this is tough. I'm trying to think 495. Do you go with Navarro? Ah, <laughs> you can't go with Navarro. Navarro's a tough that's one, That's a man. scary uh, choice. If you're watching Navs, we're yeah, not picking you. That's tough. At, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with Nick Lang. You know what? He, oh, he, he, he like Jeff Kotcher, would give me the puck, but I always reciprocated it. Uh, and, and we did win some uh, nice skate safe championships, and I still have those plaques in my house. Well, so. the skate safe house league roller kids knew nothing about the ice cycle, so it was pretty easy. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it was. It was, it was slick. Well, I think I think for uh, the guys that I'd celebrate with after a big win, uh, it'd be pretty straightforward. I didn't. They always say the best choices you got to make are the ones that are made for you. And, uh, my father always told me less players meant more ice time, and uh, more ice is good ice. Uh, so <laughs> as you, when you think about that, we've rarely had bench players. So uh, the, the guys that I was on the ice with grinding it out in the corners and putting the pucks in the back of the net were probably the guys they go throw back some drinks with too. Couldn't have said it better. You know, I mean, I can remember when we were playing back and we were at Winter Wars and, you know, we are coming home and, you know, we actually we lost in playoffs and we're pissed off. And 
Sloan, Sean Sloman was our head coach, so he was, he was of course, the, the daddy bus to the boys. And uh, Foxy was in the car, and this kid just has the bladder of an 80-year-old man. So there's nothing but an uncapped Gatorade bottle. Guy whips it out, just does his thing, right? And all of a sudden, little do we know, we just hear a bang, right? And we're starting to get honked at, and he goes, I don't think the cap was on. This kid, on, we had to be on the LIE, tosses the bottle, hits a beamer dead straight in the windshield, piss goes everywhere. Sloman's about to get in a fight with the guy. It was just absolutely unreal. And it just shows you like, I mean, he went to college for four years away. Like we haven't talked in a while. And you know, regardless, his brother kind of brings us together now. We're hanging out at the garden, see him at every single game. But it's just like what hockey brings us. I mean, we, have, we haven't seen each other for years, I'd say leading up to what the last year has been. And I mean, it's like we've never, never lost touch. Yeah. You know, it's, that's just how it is. I, I feel the way about, I mean, we know kids from Michigan, Cali, PA, New Jersey, Florida. And every time you see these kids, you, you didn't have to see them for five years. And it's like you're seeing them, you know, the very next day. It's unreal. And I, I don't think any sport brings you closer than a sport like hockey. Couldn't agree more. And uh, just, just to that point, Nick, on your story there, uh, that, all those facts are accurate. I think it's Sloman's fault. Every time he coaches me, whether it was at the Maccabee games or uh, the State Wars or Winter oh, Wars dude. tournament, I, I always come in second. So well, yeah, well, I, I, think, I think I need to change it up over Sloman, here. You're not going to win. You're going to have a good time. That's about it. And going for second place. That's it.